So what's going on guys and welcome to another video. Today I want to go over briefly the subject of body fat. So I'm going to look at ways that you can reduce your own body fat percentage. Um, a lot of people's common misconceptions about body fat and then also how some people in the fitness industry will use your own misconceptions, misconceptions against you in order to sell you uh, programs or workouts that you might not need. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. So one of the ideas that you've probably run into in the past, um, definitely through advertising and then some people in the fitness community, is the idea of spot reduction, where you would target a certain part of your body and reduce fat there. For example, having a specific exercise routine in order to target your abs um, without really dealing with um, overall nutrition and then overall body fat. So one of the main, one of the main ways that parts of the fitness industry can target you especially the people who are being more deceptive, is really um, just playing to this common misconception that a lot of people have. The truth is though that with fat reduction and like body fat, it's something that you have to reduce overall. So it's a combination of your diet, um, training, and nutrition, which a lot of people don't really understand. They're looking more to get that quick fix of like this special routine um, to help develop six pack and like this number of, and like X number of minutes. So that's always something that you should be watching out for. Yeah, so definitely if you're checking out people's different exercise routines in order to develop abs or get shredded, um, you, have to, you also have to look at their content to see if they're kind of covering the basics of nutrition too, because in the end, that's really what a lot of body fat comes down to is proper nutrition. Um, there's also a lot of genetic factors too, which people don't really want to talk about, but that's just the truth, that's just how it is. So. All right, so when it comes to the fitness industry, obviously one of the ways that a lot of individuals do make money is by selling their own personal workout programs, um, sometimes their own personal fitness instruction. But when it comes to body fat especially, a lot of the times the answer isn't really a workout and it's gonna be more of your diet and nutrition overall. So obviously, you know, that kind of just debunks a lot of those a lot of those groups in the advertisement where you where you hear about you know spot reduction of body fat um, which isn't really something that's possible I'll talk about that later but um, if they don't include like a nutrition aspect um, then they're probably not going to be the best for getting the same results that you want so that's just something to keep in mind okay. so another thing that's important to note is the fact that body fat percentage is actually really hard to estimate so even with all the tests out there, um, it's still hard to get like an accurate number and it's gonna vary between test to test and then also person to person, the proper and healthy ranges. So these are just really average numbers up here of when individuals would start to see um, results from having a lowered body fat. So they would start to see their abs coming through. They'd be a little bit more shredded. So first thing that's important to note is that what I wrote up here are just numbers. Um, I'm gonna quickly show, you know, like athlete X's, um, like body fat chart. But the truth is there's a very large, like healthy range for basically all individuals where it just really depends person to person who's gonna show, um, you know, more abs, who's gonna be looking a little bit more shredded and better. So for men generally, you do wanna get below like 15%. Um, obviously you don't wanna go too low and be unhealthy. Women, since they have generally a higher um, body fat percentage overall, <laughs> they, just, they generally have a higher body fat percentage overall. So they can just go, they can go to like 18, 17% or so, and then they can start, um, you know, showing up through being a little bit more shredded. So that's just all really things to consider. Um, definitely though, I do want to note that it isn't really realistic to go super low when it comes to body fat or to set goals of having a body fat that's really low just because that isn't really healthy or sustainable. So a lot of the things that you will also see in the fitness community, so people competing, um, people with extremely low body fat, you do have to keep in mind that that's not something that's sustainable. So they don't actually do that. They aren't actually looking like that um, all the time throughout the year just because having such a low level of body fat um, also 
is correlated with like hormone imbalance and then eventually if it's really low it could lead to like organ damage for example and I know um, especially for women like it gets very dangerous when they get below a certain body fat percentage so all something all something you should keep in mind but if you're just like a regular individual who wants to be fit healthy and slightly shredded um, you're just gonna have to cut down a little bit and it's not too bad to do so how do you do it So how do you do it? How would one lower their own body fat? You know, just a bit to start getting their results to show through. So this process is again gonna come down a lot to nutrition. So obviously I'm not a registered um, dietitian, so you do wanna check with experts, but the basics of, um, of body fat reduction, you do wanna be in a slight caloric deficit. So what does that mean? That means you're taking in slightly less calories then you're burning, right? So this number doesn't even have to be that great. Like it's not that huge of a difference to you know, cause a reduction in body fat. An important thing, as I mentioned before, when it comes to body fat, is that this is something that's reduced throughout your entire body. It's not like a specific area that you can target. Um, yeah, so, yep, so what can you do? Well, there's a few things you can do. That caloric deficit I mentioned before, you can also train in a semi-fasted state. So what does this mean? So this means that, I mean, you don't necessarily have to like starve yourself for like hours and hours of the day and then go on and do intense training. Um, training in a semi-fasted state could be as simple as just working out first thing in the morning before you eat breakfast, you know? Just drink some water, um, stay nice and safe, obviously. But this is a great way for your body to burn like other energy sources and then just help you reduce body fat. Um, another important thing that basically all people should do in their day-to-day -day, like diets anyway, is simply to drink only water. So a lot of the times, um, the drinks that we see around like in society, uh, in like Western society, they're very like high calorie. So all your um, sodas, like shakes, so they have very like high calorie percentage or um, they have a lot of sugar in them. And the thing is when, you, when you're drinking, when you're like drinking things, um, it's a lot harder for your body to tell like how many calories you're inputting into your body as opposed to eating. So if you stick to drinking only water, like one, you're gonna be reducing the number of calories um, that you consume overall. And then two, uh, this is really just gonna help you like shred out your body, remove toxins. So very helpful, very beneficial. Um, so when it comes to training, um, obviously some of the important things you can do is lifting. So that's kind of what this channel will help you do, hopefully in the future. But um, when we get back to gyms, but yeah, so lifting is gonna increase your overall like lean body mass composition. Sorry, yeah, it's gonna increase your overall lean body mass. And so what this is gonna do is gonna allow you to burn more energy um, whenever you're in like a resting state. So when you're sleeping, for example, if you have a higher lean body mass percentage, you're still gonna be burning more energy. So it's gonna be like healthier for you overall and it's gonna also help you reach some of your fitness goals. So lifting, very important. Another thing you can incorporate into your training is um, the idea of just like high intensity sprint training, for example, because what this is gonna do is give you kind of like a metabolic afterburn effect. So after your training is done, there's still gonna be a period of time um, where your body is burning energy at a higher rate, right? So that's also gonna help you reach your goals. And then lastly, um, I, wanna do go, I do wanna go over the basics of intermittent fasting, just so you, may, so just so you kind of understand what that term means. So it's a term you're probably gonna um, run into a lot eventually you know, as you begin your journey in the fitness community. So basically intermittent fasting is um, when you kind of limit your, you limit your like window during the day when you're allowed to eat. So usually it's about like an eight hour window, I think. Um, and then the other time you're fasting. So you can still eat like the same number of calories. It's just, there's like a time, there's like a time shift of like when you can eat. So what this is gonna do is kind of put your body into that natural like deficit state, um, you know, in that earlier part of the day. So that can also contribute to some individual's training. Now, I can't personally say that I've ever had any experience with intermittent fasting. Um, it's just something I haven't like, tried yet, but I do know there's a lot of people who do talk about it, um, have more information, so you should definitely do more research on that. I just wanted to get you familiar with the term, but that could also be a possibility if you do it safely. So the main takeaway is that body fat is a very wide 
Um, the numbers are very like wide range of what's considered healthy and like what will also um, show a little bit of muscle through, a little bit of shredding through. And this really depends individual to individual. Um, it's also based on like sex. So, and there's also a lot of genetic factors, some of which may be out of your control. Um, but the main takeaway is that it's really just a number. So in the end, unless you're really looking to be at a competitive level or you know you have the um, scientific knowledge and nutritional knowledge, there's no reason to shoot for something super low um, because you're still gonna probably get the exact same results you want at like a higher body fat percentage. Again, showing Athlean X's body fat percentage chart. So there's still like a huge range of you know what's gonna still be very fit. So hopefully some of this information will help you guys um, if you want to like lower your body fat percentage and to, to look a little bit more you know fit, healthy, a little bit more shredded. Obviously you do have to do ab training too, that's very important when it comes along to this. So I will link my ab training video up above, might be helpful for you. But that's really it for me. So hopefully you'll take some of this information, incorporate it into your own life and training. Um, if that was helpful for you, you know, like, uh, comment, subscribe to the channel, be a great help. And I'll see you guys in the next video.